begins the craziness of high school basketball. These two programs have been the cream of the crop in the girls' city league here in Boston. Always fun to see the future of Boston basketball. Boy going to work. Somehow oh. gets it to go and the foul. Jordan off the up fake. That's the kind of control finish you want to have. Aiden from way downtown. Yeah, right. Big play follow up that push. The Tech Boston Bears have won back-to-back -back championship in 2019. Hello, Boston, and welcome to Madison Park High School in Roxbury for the boys' North Division IV sectional semifinals. As tonight, the Cristo Ray Knights will be taking on the Snowden Cougars. Hello, everybody. I'm Pat Flaherty. Joined by my partner, as always, Alan Platt. And Alan, you know, we started the state tournament with a lot of city league teams getting into the tournament this year. But, you know, a couple of teams that we sort of forgot about and we often forget about, even though they've had great seasons, are the Snowden Cougars and even though they're not in the city league, the Cristo Ray Knights who are out in Dorchester. Definitely. And the Cristo Ray uh, under uh, new coach uh, Larry Merritt has turned their, their program around. It's only a few years ago they were really struggling to get wins. Now, right. uh, not only in, in the state tournament, but they've made it to this round. That's right. They have a chance to go to the sectional semifinals tonight. One of the biggest reasons that Cristo Ray is in this position is their big man, Ray Bosquet. Very good player. Yeah, I'm watching Crystal him in the, the warm-up. Believe me, he can get up in the air. Uh, and, and looking over their, their season, he had a, a lot of double-digit rebound games. He had 19 rebounds in a recent game. He can score inside. He runs the floor, obviously. And like I said, he can get in the air. No question. He's got a nice little mid-range jump shot as well for this Crystal Rays Knights nice team. Meanwhile, on the other side for the Snowden Cougars, they were in the state tournament last year. They're back again this season. One player who's really stepped his game up is Lansana Kaba, the small forward for the Snowden Cougars. Well, again, a versatile player. I mean, it's in uh, a number of his relatives we've had over the last, course of the last five years or so. That's okay, right. Cousins and, and sisters. sisters. Right, yeah. So, But, but Kaba's like, a, like an all-around player, uh, very, very valuable to getting this team going, mainly on the defensive end. Good That's athlete, right. uh, is able to s set things up. And then on offense, uh, like you said, he can do pretty much a little bit of everything. So it, when you have players like that, a veteran coach like Paul Rogers knows how to uh, use uh, his abilities, Cobb's versatility, uh, to, to set things off and get the rest of the team going. No question. And a guy who, you know, this Snowden team got bounced in the first round last year in the state tournament. So you know they're hungry to make a run again this season. Now for more on this game, we're going to go to our sideline reporter, Seth Orensky, who's got an update for us. Seth, what do you have? Thanks, guys. Snowden's coming off a five-point overtime win the other day after scoring just 14 points in the first half. But head coach Paul Rogers said it wasn't nerves, it wasn't playing poorly, it was just a little bit of rust. They hadn't played in two and a half weeks after losing the city semifinals. And then because they were playing my nominees, the seventh seed who can't play on Friday nights, they had to push the game all the way back to Sunday. Took his team a while to get into the flow, but he was really happy how they played, especially in the second half. Looking at today's matchup against Ray Bosquet, it's not going to be an easy one. It's probably not going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup either. He thinks that his team's going to need to send multiple men at Bosquet to try to slow him down and especially try to deny him the ball. That's a big key if you're Snowden. On the opposite side, he thinks his team size could be a real issue for Chris Del Rey for those other players on the night side. This is one of the biggest teams he thinks Chris Del Rey's seen all season. He's excited to see if his team can use that size advantage to a, earn a big victory here in the sectional semifinals. Patton Allen. Seth, thanks very much. And one thing for Snowden, they were actually even bigger last year. They had a big right. six foot eight Ty Jones. Yeah, that's why center. last year's loss in the first round was, was really hurtful because they thought they were going to be able to run, get a deep run. That's right. Well, it's a second chance again here for Snowden as they picked up a win already. They're now in the sectional semifinals. They are hosting the Cristo Raid Knights. The winner tonight gets to move on to the boys' North Division Four sectional finals on Friday night in Tewksbury. Folks, we're going to head to break. When we come back, we'll have the opening tap here from Madison Park High School in Roxbury right after these messages. Don't go away. I never graduated from high school. I realized I wanted to go back to school because I didn't want to work these back-breaking jobs the rest of my life. With the help of my father and having my son that was all the motivation that I needed to come back to school. I felt accomplished. It made me feel that I could take on whatever challenges life throws at you. 
Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Honey, what I think you need is a socket wrench. I played JV basketball. I'm sorry. I don't think it looks right. This is good, and it's all is good, it, baby. Is it really all good? If you love me enough to routinely test your handyman skills, not to mention the strength of your marriage, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. I'm going to call my dad. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother, yes. you, your football hey, buddy, hey, your football buddy, you, your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You, your dog walker, your cat jogger. With early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. When I was 10, my mom got deported. We had a difficult time, and I feel that's why I didn't get to finish school. My husband is really supportive in a way that he pushed me to go back to school. She wants to have a career so her kids can look up to her. They both keep me motivated to go to school, and they see that if I do it, like they can do it too, you know? I feel that everything's possible. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Each year, there are more than a dozen significant tropical and winter storms that threaten the East Coast. So chances are there will be more hurricanes and blizzards near here again. And between school, sports, and social lives, chances are you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has all the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. All right, Monroe. You ready? Monroe! Here we go, the butterfly. Ready? Welcome back to Madison Park High School in Roxbury for the boys North Division Four sectional semifinals. It's the Snowden Cougars hosting the Cristo Ray Knights. It's Lara Quente, Rodriguez, Martinez, Crawford, and Bosquet for Cristo Ray. We'll get the Snowden starters in just a second. We're underway here at Madison. Snowden controls the opening tap. They're in the all-white uniforms with the green and gold trim. Cristo Ray in the navy uniforms with the gold and white trim. And Sanacaba, top of the key, unable to hit the three-point shot. That rebound is corralled that time by Luis Rodriguez. He held ball. He's going to jump ball. Yeah, good defensive play. Ball will go to Crystal Ray. Stone comes out in full court press. Rodriguez now trapped in the corner. Lara Quente now with it for Cristo Ray. Good swing as Bosquet tries for a three. That's off the back iron. Rebound comes down to Marquise Miller. Yes, they have a slight size advantage for Snowden with that big kid in the middle, but uh, Bosquet jumps so well and rebounds so well that he'll pretty much neutralize that. Omari Brooks. Clanahan now looking for an opening. Kaba trying to go baseline, didn't have much room. Almost a shot clock violation that time from Snowden, so they had to throw up a prayer. Three ball off the rim. Bosquet there for the putback. 
That's what he does. He's got those long arms. He's, he's a tall player. That guy. He's a junior, but a lot of uh, activity with that long body of his. Ari Brooks quickly inside to Javier Ellis, who can't finish. Marquise Miller, offensive rebound, gets tied up inside. And that's going to be a foul on Cristo Ray. Tough break for Ellis. Big fella had it underneath. I, I think he didn't realize how close he was. Here are the starters for Snowden. McClanahan, Brooks, Cobb up, Miller, and Ellis to get things going for the Cougars. Not the inbounds, but <laughs> called it before. Get it inside to Miller, and he's going to get two free throws. Ball's going to be on Basquet. You <clears throat> got beat on the cut by Miller. A lot of times, Division Four, unless there's a really outstanding player or team, you tend to, you know they're in the tournament, but you, you don't always pay that much attention. But these are these are two good teams. No uh, question. Crystal Ray, like I said, uh, they're really starting to have a strong program with the Larry Miller. Miller makes one out of two for Snowden. And Snowden has been very good in the City League over the past three years. They, especially now that they've added that first round to the City League playoffs, they've made it a couple of years in a row now. Well, Paul Bryce has been around for a while. He's, uh, I think, about eight years or so. Time to steal from McClanahan. Quickly up to Omari Brooks for the layup. <laughs> Rodriguez back down the other end. It's going to be a backcourt violation on Cristo Ray as Larry Quente couldn't chase it down. There you see Larry Merritt, former athletic director and head coach at Cathedral, now at Cristo Ray, who became the interim head coach last season, midway through the year, then they decided to make it full-time head coach after 2019. Yeah, that been coaching a long time, different levels. Boys and uh, girls as well. Like you mentioned, the Cathedral for a long time. He actually played at Cathedral, then he went to uh, Merrimack College. Mark Wente. Travel, yeah. There's some nerves going on. Yeah, a little over It's an uh, extra long sort of warm up period for the guys, so. Because the, the girls' game ahead of this one was. Uh, Got really over a little earlier. Quick. It just, it just flew right by. Taba looking for an old thing, squeezes by defenders, gets the layup to go. He got those long arms. Gets the basket. That's wet. Nice move in the bucket. Count the hoop and the harm for Ray Bosquet. That was right in front of his pad. We could see how he jumped in the air and was able to slide away from the uh, contact. Watch this. See, he, he prevented a, an offensive foul. Still, because of the contact, he has a chance for a three-point play. Akinelli Crawford now checking in for Cristo Ray. Should be familiar to a lot of fans of the Boston City League. Akinelli played for both Brighton and Tech Boston before heading over to Cristo Ray. Now Cristo Ray going to some full-court pressure. Javi Ellis with his eyes on the rim. Short that time. Rebound comes down to Miller, who gets the hoop in the arm for Snoop. Boy, Marquise Miller very active on the glass so far here in the first quarter. Well, that's, again, big fellow just a little short, but there's Miller. Knows how to tie out some room for himself to get those extra possessions. Substitution for Cristo Ray. As Irvick Martinez Herrera heads to the bench. Is that Tracy Mathurin? Miller can't hit the second. Larry Quinte chases after the rebound. And he was stepping out of bounds. That's going to go back to Snope. Snope's coming out with this double in the ball, regardless of where it is on the court. Crystal Ray now, you know, 
give them some of their own medicine. Ellis scores inside for Luger. That's what, that's what Snowden's been, been trying to go through for the first couple of minutes here. Larry Merritt's going to take a timeout. I know he didn't like the fact that they, they were able to get the ball inside to, uh, to Ellis so easily. Snowden is really spreading the ball around. Four different players have scored a points for the Cougars here in the first quarter. And right now for Snowden, pretty productive first quarter so far. They're really sharing the ball well. And you see the depth of this Snowden team. Oh, definitely. They, well, they, they run that full court press, three quarter court, full court press. And then, so you need fresh legs in there to keep that, you know, keep that going, get some steals out of it. Here's Paul Rogers. One thing Coach Rogers, coach. Said, yeah. coach, coach Rogers said before this game, too. Last year they had the big Ty Jones, big 6'8 center, uh, really good for the Snowden program. But he said, you know, because you have that guy, you tend to yeah. expect yeah. To, to, to force it into him, really have the offense run through him. He said, really, this year we've needed all of our guys to really step up and contribute, you know, heavy minutes and, and contribute offensively, and that's – Created more of a, a better spreading the ball around on the team. Oh, yeah, well, well a situation like that, you, you, you have more players taking on responsibility, probably uh, working harder in practice, as you can expect to play more minutes. Out of the timeout, good swing that time for Crystal Ray as Akinyele Crawford is fouled, taking a three that time by Marquise Miller. Yeah, Miller, we talked about Miller's activity. That time a little too anxious, because he was actually, uh, yeah, that's a pretty clear foul. Crawford hits the first free throw. Both teams are relatively young. You know, first of sophomores and juniors on each squad. Yeah, for Snowden, Javier Ellis is the only senior on the Cougars. Yeah, Crystal Ray does have four seniors, but they, they, they also have <clears throat> four sophomores and a couple of juniors. Crawford misses that free throw. It's chased down by Rodriguez. Crawford can't hit the jumper. But it's chased down again by Crystal Ray. Good swing for the Knights, Bosquet. Yeah, it's going to be a travel that time. Whistled on Tracy Murthy. Mathurin, excuse me. Midway through the first quarter, two point lead for Snowden. Near the boys' North 4 sectional semifinals. Amari Brooks all the way down the Steve. floor. Wow, that's flying. Four-point lead now for the Cougars. Lara Quinte trying to go baseline. Can't get it to go, but he gets fouled. They got two free throws. Had defenders in the front and the back. And that was a nice drive in the baseline. Yeah, see the, the uh, defender in the front could call for the blocking foul. Started to fall down before the contact was even, was even there. Marquise Miller committing his second personal foul. <laughs> Substitution for Snowden, Jeremiah Ismenus comes in for Snowden as Miller heads to the bench. Marquante hits both. <laughs> Knights now five for six in the free throw line here in the first quarter. Kaba trying to dribble through the defense. Crawford comes away with the steal. Bosquet. And Ray Bosquet finishes on the break. Nice pass by Crawford. Traffic to make it easy for Bosquet to finish that layup. Another turnover at half court. Crystal Ray looking for their first lead of the game. I'm sorry, they scored the opening move. On to the post to Basquiat yet. Yeah. Araquente can't hit the jumper. Javi Ellis with the rebound. McClanahan all the way to the bucket. Ellis 
Couldn't hang on to it. That's going to go back to Crystal Ray. Substitution for Snowden as Richard Kaplan comes in for the Cougars. Richard was actually the starting point guard for Snowden last season. The coach Rogers actually likes him a lot more coming off the bench. Really provides this team with a spark. Yeah, a lot of times you can get a, the spark to coming off the bench, so it's up to the player to take on that new role and, and accept it. Dribbling violation by Crystal Ray. Ball goes right back. Nava airmails a pass. That'll go back to the Knights. Yeah, both teams feel pretty effective in their zone presses. Early minutes. Mosquette trying to feed it inside. It's knocked away. Rejected out of bounds that time by Ismayers. Watch good defense, good help. Ismayers number one. Clean block. Araquente for three. Cabo with the rebound for Snowden. Quickly up to Brooks. He can't hit from long distance. It's Mayus with the rebound, and he's going to get two from the strike. Yeah, did. Both big fellas for Snowden and White ran the floor that time. So when that shot went up, there two of them. You see <clears throat> Miss Mayus as well as Dallas both under the basket the offensive rebound. May who's no good at the first. Substitution for both squads. Yeah, Croft is coming back in for Crystal Ray. Bensley Byron also in for the Knights. Kaba takes a breather for Snowden. This May who's hits the second free throw. Also in for the Snowden Cougars, Isaiah Robinson. All full court pressure. Thrown away that time, Kaplan with the steal for Snowden. Richard Kaplan. Thrown away by Rodriguez. Yep. Squint. Yep. With the finish. <laughs> they see it coming. One point lead for Cristo Ray, and we get a foul just that's after that's half. Four second foul on Basquet. So, Paul Rogers. Larry Merritt, rather. That's a, yeah, it is Busquet. And his teammates love to give him an open floor like that. They'll always give him the ball so he can, he can get a loud finish. Yeah, Busquet heading to the bench it's, now yeah, with nine two, points. Yeah, two fouls. It's just too early in the game to take the chance. Kaplan top of the key, can't hit the jumper. Foul out of the wing is that time it was Rodriguez with the ball for Crystal Ray. Yeah, Capilon did that time a little bit of a bump on the sideline. See the bottom of the chin right there. Rodriguez rattles home the three. Travel there. It might have been an earlier one. It didn't get called, but they called that that, that one there. See that the the pressure, the pressure for Crystal Ray is a little bit different. They're actually coming up from behind to try to tap the ball away. Even Rod though both McCl teams will have six turnovers. Rod so. McClanahan coming back in for Snowden. Forty seconds left to go before the end of the quarter. The turnover that time for Crystal Ray. Here comes Kaba out in the open floor. To finish this one. Kaba all the way. Put back no good from Ellis. And 
stolen away that time by Kaplan. Stolen right back by Rodriguez. A lot of contact inside, no whistle. This Mayus corrals it for Snowden. Rodriguez nice steal. with the steal, finishes the layup. And Crystal Ray loves getting those deflections in the backcourt. Six point lead now for the Knights. That little bit of burst of energy back gave this six point lead. Yeah, that first quarter ends in a fury as Christo Ray takes a six point lead after one, thanks to some hustle plays like this one from Rodriguez. Nice, nice double team. We'll be right back in the second quarter here on Game of the Week, right after this. If I could go back and change it all, I would. I, would. I think I'm going to miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Or maybe it's just the little moments. I could go back. If I could go back and change it all. If I could go back. I would. But I can't. Welcome back to Madison Park High School in Roxbury for the Boys North Division Four sectional semifinals. Cristo Ray leads Snowden 18 to 12. Folks, if you want to follow us on social media? You can go to our Facebook page. Go to facebook.com slash game of the week Boston. A lot of good stuff up on that site. You can also follow us on Twitter at Boston City TV. And if you want to tweet at us, use the hashtag Boston G O W. Well, Cristo Ray's Top team, top player actually went out with a little bit of foul trouble at the end of the quarter. Crystal Ray scored five straight That's points. Well, but they went, they went into the full court pressure. They were able to get two steals, the, the ledge layups. The Knights actually ended the quarter on a 14 to four run. They now have a six point lead. Cabas start the second quarter, could hit the shot, put back no good for Miss Mayus. And Bosquet comes away with the rebound. Bosquet gets it poked away. Up to Kaba for the win. Can't put the ball down. If you're a big guy against either one of these teams. Avi Ellis knocking that one away. It's going to stay with Crystal Ray. Get that deflection. Probably saved the layup. zone now in the half court for Snowden. Trying to take the drive, driving lanes away. Three ball no good that time with the rebound comes down with Mayus. A little Foul. too much that time. Rodriguez, I'm sorry, Nunez Perez is trying to get another steal. Got those quick guys, Nunez Perez along with Luis Rodriguez in the backcourt now. Crystal Ray. Okay, now I'm gonna go to the forward back in, so going back to the backwards, Martinez Herrera. Both teams zoning it up defensively, looking for deflections and trying to take away passing lanes. Three ball on the way, and it doesn't rattle home. Put back, but this may be no good. Ellis can't get the put back either. That time he puts it back up and in the second time around. So Javier Ellis cuts the lead for Crystal Ray down to two. A little bit of contact at half court. McClanahan gets the layup to tie it up at 18. Well, that's it, was lucky he didn't get his third foul on that play. Coach Merritt wants a timeout here with a minute and a half gone by in the second quarter. A nice little run there from Snowden to get them back to a tie game. You see a little bit of contact, but again, Snowden taking advantage, and just like that, they get the game tied up. Our sideline reporter, Seth Orensky, has an update for us. Seth, what's happening? 
Thanks, guys. Snowden's out to a 6-0 run to start this second quarter, but it's not a change in the X and O's. Paul Rogers met with his team and just asked for more. He was really upset with the team's effort and really upset with how many times they looked indecisive when passing the ball. He said, this is not up to our standards. We've got to be better. And thus far, a much better performance to start the second quarter. Guys, take it away. Seth, thanks very much. Coach Rogers wants this team to be a little more assertive with how they pass the basketball. And it also helps when your big guys get four rebounds in <laughs> one play. Well, one of the un underrated parts of that first quarter was it seemed like when Marquise Miller went out for Snowden with a couple of fouls, right. that's yeah, when Crystal Ray sure. started to come right yeah. back. Yeah, the size for Snowden is something they're banking on against this Crystal Ray team. Almost poked away by Sweat in there. Put it back up and in. A little accidental offense, but it all counts. Planahan all the way to the rim. Nice Gets shoot. it to go and the foul. So he, that time he was not indecisive at all. He knew exactly what he was doing. All the way, you see his eyes. Find a way to squeeze it up there. Rod McClanahan looking to complete the three-point play. And he does. One-point lead for Snowden. Larry Quinte stepped out of bounds. That's going to go back to the Cougars. Yeah, Cabo actually took the angle away, forced him to the sideline. Mayo's beautifully inside the uh, Ellis who couldn't finish. Yeah, Ellis is just having a tough first half. He's, uh, he made the last putback, but say a couple of others just, just come up short. It's Mayo's commits his first personal foul. That's now five team fouls on Snowden, 17 fouls on Crystal Ray. So next time Snowden. Picks up and causes a foul. They'll be at the free throw line shooting one on one. Wide open for three, but unable to hit it that time was Irvick Martinez Herrera. Planahan. Out of bounds. Okay, same thing. That side, Crystal Ray forced Cobbins to the sideline. Both these coaches, it's interesting. They, have, they have really have similar styles. They love, they'll jump into a full court press, they'll go three quarters, they'll go half court press, they'll double the ball. Marquente on the drive, and they're going to whistle Ismaeus for a foul. Marquente is getting two free throws. Try to use his body, or you can hit him a hot four on. See the long pass from half court to the deep corner, the opposite corner, that's always open when you have teams doubling the ball at the half court. Now, it's just tough a lot for some, some players to make that accurate pass. So far, Crystal Ray's done it pretty well. They just haven't been able to, to hit either one of the shots. Quente misses both from the free throw line. It's deflected, that'll stay with Snowden. Crystal Ray is really doubling. As soon as the ball comes past half court, someone jumps to double it. Amari Brooks back in for Snowden as Balde heads to the bench. Ellis trying to score over Bosquet. And Bosquet eventually gets the loose ball. His long arms are Bosquet. Rodriguez. It's knocked out of bounds by Ellis. Four 
Corner three is buried that time for Martinez Herrera. Had a defense closing out on him, but had to had to good stroke. Only 10 seconds. Yeah. Another turnover that time by Snowden. The team's now with eight turnovers so far here in the first half. Deep three that time off the back rim. Lara Quente with the rebound. Gets swatted inside by Ellis. Here comes McClanahan. Brooks from three, buries that one for Snowden. Snowden regains a one point lead. Went inside. Oh, nice finish. Woo. He split two big defenders that time, Pat. That's a turnover that time by Snowden. Snowden. Yeah, we say we tend the open. He can, he can get in the air. And he controls the ball really well. I mean, that time he had two defenders going for block shots. Thirteen points now for Boss Quet. Crystal Ray with a one-point lead. Make it That's 50. <laughs> Here comes Kaba back down the other end for Snowden all the way to the nice rim. Finish. Boss Quet looking to answer, and he's fouled by Lansana Kaba. A little too much. Pressure that time by Cabo. Actually, he bailed that squid out because he had run sure, he was no man's three different guys. See, there's all his white shirts. All you see is white shirts. Without that foul, they have a fast break going the other way. Substitution for Snowden. Marquise Miller coming back in. This is May who sets to the bench. Wet, knocks down the front end of the one and one. He'll have one more. He hit the second two point lead here for Crystal Ray. Three minutes left to go in the second quarter. Plan ahead. The double. Able to pick it up over to Brooks. Omari for three short with that one. Clanahan with the rebound gets it swiped away. Eric Quente back down the other end. Unable to save it there for Chris O'Reilly. That'll go back to Snowden. Both teams forcing bad passes because of all this ball pressure. Clanahan for three, uh, well off the mark. Miller gets the rebound, can't put it back up and in. Gets it again, count the hoop and the hard. Marquise Miller going to work inside. Second time he's been able to get, at this time a third offensive rebound. Gets the basket and the chance for three point play. Keeps those hands active. Talk about him being active. He has six rebounds already. Miller completes the three-point play. Gives Snowden the one-point lead. He with 2.19 left to go before halftime. Rodriguez all the way to the basket. Side to Brooks, who's short with the layup. Miller with another rebound. And he's going to get two free throws for Snowden. Well, he, just, he just stays active, Pat. He, he, once he plants himself inside, he's Marquise again. 
Good, good hands. Marquise is for a sophomore. Miller no good on the first substitution for Snowden. Aviel is going to get a break. So we see the drive from Rodriguez. This is coast to coast, Luis Rodriguez. Yeah, nobody stopped the ball. Miller 0 for 2 from the free throw line. Still a one point lead for Cristo Ray. Coming up on under two minutes left to go here in the second quarter. Akinelli Crawford knocks down the corner three. He came off the bench in the first quarter shooting the ball as soon as he touched it. Same thing here. Brooks going baseline short with that one. With a hell ball. Mayus and Garcia getting tied up underneath. That'll go back to Cristo Ray. Miller going to head to the bench again. Ibra Balde coming back in for the Snowden Cougars. Crawford from the other side. That one off the back iron gets his own rebound. Tough rebound inside for Miss Mayus. Yeah, and reaching foul on Crawford. That's going to be the tenth personal foul, on, or the tenth team foul rather, on Cristo Ray. So Miss Mayus is going to be shooting two. Cristo Ray foul on AK Crawford. His first team touch. Double bonus. Double bonus. Yep. Two shot foul. Substitution for Cristo Ray. As Irvic Martinez Herrera comes back in for the Knights. Quente also back in for Cristo Ray. This may also have one more. Can't hit that one again. Corner three from Rodriguez around the rim and out. Here comes Kaba for Snowden. Trying to go baseline. Nice Strong finish. drive from Lansana Kaba. Little tricky dribble freed him up from Basquet, who was trying for his block shot, top block. Basquet off his knee. That's going to go back to Snowden here with 49 seconds left to go before the half. <laughs> A little bit of a substitution hiccup that time. And Crystal Ray. Kaba looking for an opening. Beautiful nice feed inside that time to his mayor. All day with a nice feed. Yeah, he, he made the play. Ties it up at 33. What a steal from Brooks, who lays it up and in for Snowden, gives them a two point lead. Nice little run here by the Cougars to regain the lead. Ray will play for the final shot of the half. Rodriguez got it knocked out of bounds that time. Nine seconds left to go before halftime here for the Christian Ray Knights. Araquente and Martinez Herrera back in for the Knights. Martinez Herrera for three, can't get it to go. Cabo with the rebound. Mayus fires a three at the end of the corner, can't get it to go. Actually had a teammate, but didn't realize he was under the basket. After one half of play here at Madison Park, it's a two-point ball game with Snowden leading 
Christo Ray, 35-33. What a back and forth first half. That's exactly, we've had back here. and forth. Once both teams, both coaches decide to go to the full court pressure, there's a lot of loose balls, a lot of health to skelter, and a lot of good defense. A lot That's of really right. good defense. Both teams shooting really low percentages from the field because they're being defended well. No question. And you look at Christo Ray, I mean, Ray Bosquet has been everything that we thought of and more. Well, I. He hasn't touched the ball that much. I mean, the, right. the, the, the pressing defense and then some of that the half-court zone has prevented the entry passes getting into him. He's created the, the points he has, he pretty much created on his own. He got the That's fast right. break dunk, but he's also made a couple of nice moves splitting uh, defenders. Uh, but I think he'll, he'll do a lot more in the second half. Yeah, we'll see how, what kind of adjustments these teams make at the half. The head coach of the Snowden Cougars, Paul Rogers, is with our sideline reporter, Seth Dolrensky. Seth, take it away. Joining my Stoning coach, Paul Rogers. Coach, you really challenged your team to be a little bit more energetic, to show Stoning basketball. You start the quarter in a 6-0 run, ended on a 6-0 run to take a lead. How happy were you with the second quarter compared to what you saw in the first? I'm happy overall. I'm happy. We're winning the game, and it's surviving advance. It's state tournament play. We didn't ever expect this to be easy. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard. But our guys keep pushing, and we keep plugging, in, and that's how we play. So I'm very satisfied right now. A lot of talk about Ray Basquet in the pregame. Obviously, he's talented, but you seem to have the advantage down low, points in the paint. How big is it just to kind of settle down your ball handler so that you can get the ball down low? Yeah, that's absolutely, you're spot on with that. We have to be patient in their press. We have to pass through it instead of dribbling and then set up our big guys down low. This game at times feels like a wrestling match and at times like a, a, a track meet at the same time. How do you keep your team focused? Obviously, some calls aren't going to go your way. Some calls will, uh, but just trying to stay even keeled. Well, you know what? It's like we told him it's a 32-minute game. It's going to be long. There's going to be ups and downs. You just got to keep pushing. Coach, thanks so much for your time. Good luck in the second half. Guys, take it away. Seth, thanks very much. And Coach Rogers, certainly uh, appreciative Sounds like a veteran the, coach, right? That's yeah, right. Eight yeah. or nine years. Yeah, he's been around. He knows. No question. And, and it's it's unusual for a coach to admit that, yeah, I'm happy, even though you're only up two points. <laughs> you right. know, they'll, they'll always you know find things you can improve on, but I think he likes the fact that his big guys are really controlling the rebounding on the offensive glass. I mean, between Miller, the young kid, and then the two big guys inside, right. they're, they're really doing a job inside. No question. A lot of good rebounding effort from both teams there in the first half. Folks, we're going to head to break. When we come back, we'll have our halftime stats and some halftime highlights before we get going to the third quarter here for the Boys North Division IV sectional semifinals between the Snowden Cougars and the Cristo Ray Knights. Make sure you stick around. When I never graduated from high school, I realized I wanted to go back to school because I didn't want to work these back-breaking jobs the rest of my life. With the help of my father and having my son, that was all the motivation that I needed to come back to school. I felt accomplished. It made me feel that I could take on whatever challenges life throws at you. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Honey, what I think you need is a socket wrench. I played JV basketball. I'm sorry. I don't think it looks right. This is good, and it's all is good, it, baby. Is it really all good? If you love me enough to routinely test your handyman skills, not to mention the strength of your marriage, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. I'm going to call my dad. One in three adults has pre-diabetes. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother. Yes. You, your football buddy, your football buddy. You, your plumber. Breathe right into your foot. Your plumber's masseuse. Yes. You, your dog walker, your cat jogger. With early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org.
When I was 10, my mom got deported. We had a difficult time, and I feel that's why I didn't get to finish school. My husband is really supportive in a way that he pushed me to go back to school. She wants to have a career so her kids can look up to her. They both keep me motivated to go to school, and they see that if I do it, like, they can do it too, you know? I feel that everything's possible. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Each year, there are more than a dozen significant tropical and winter storms that threaten the East Coast. So chances are there will be more hurricanes and blizzards near here again. And between school, sports, and social lives, chances are you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has all the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. All right, Monroe, you ready? Monroe! Here we go, the butterfly. Ready? I am what hunger looks like in America. I am an eight-year-old girl who's not excited for the last day of school. Because this may be the last time I'll have lunch. Till September. I am a single father of two who works three part-time jobs. And that's still not enough to put food on the table. I was created by artificial intelligence from faces of the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. Feeding America, 200 food banks strong. Imagine being fired because of who you love. Imagine being denied medical treatment because of who you marry. Imagine being evicted because of who you are. Millions of Americans don't have to imagine this. They have to live it. Because in 30 states, it's legal to discriminate against LGBT people. Welcome back to Madison Park High School in Roxbury for the Boys North Division IV sectional semifinals. Right now, the Snow Cougars lead the Crystal Ray Knights 35-33. And we're going to take a look at our halftime stats here from Madison Park High. And first up, it's going to be the Crystal Ray Knights. Uh, Crystal Ray with uh, Bosquet, the big junior in the middle, 16 points. Uh, Rodriguez with seven rebounds. Bosquet, as ex expected, six rebounds. Uh, <clears throat> La Quince with three. And then assists, profit with three and two for Martinez Herrera. Let's take a look at Snowden's halftime stats. Yeah, for Snowden, uh, Brooks, nine points. Cabo, eight points. And then the rebounds, Allison Miller, eight and seven. Uh, McClanahan had four assists, and uh, Baldy had two assists. As matter of fact, Baldy had the one assist that set them off on the sixth, uh, sixth old run. We well, found one of the big fellas for an easy layup. So both teams pretty much doing what they want to do. It's just a matter of who's going to find a way to sort of break free. That's right. I mean, it's been a one, two, three, three four, I think um, a six point, you know, difference at, at one point. But that's it's his basket, 22. We toss the ball here. We get those long arms, gets in the air. I like this place. He was able to avoid the contact and still get a chance for three point play. Another finish on a fast break, and I think this is a dunk right here. There you go, with the finish. He usually gets three or four of those a game, so I think the second half, his teammates, especially the guards, are going to look for him to be running the floor with those long arms of his so he can throw it down. Yeah, Bosquet with 16 points in that first half. Meanwhile, for Snowden, they're really spreading the ball around. Brooks with the nine to lead the Snowden Cougars, but, you know, you haven't seen... Their, their top two scorers have been Javier Ellis and Caba. Caba got it going a little bit there uh, late in the second quarter, but Ellis hasn't really gotten much going offensively. Well, and, and that's what, what happens sometimes because you never know what kind of defense you're going to run into. And uh, the fact that Crystal Ray is doubling the ball all the time, that's preventing Ellis from really getting to the spots he wants to be. That's right. Ellis has been working on the glass. He has seven offensive rebounds so far in this game. As Snowden will start off the third quarter with the basketball and a two-point lead. See, it's more pressure. This, this time it's man-to-man -man pressure. 
Caba stepping back for three, short on that one. Unable to corral the rebound. Crawford quickly up the floor to Rodriguez. Nice bounce pass by Crawford. Ties it up at 35. Poked away that time by Martinez Herrera. Up and under. Can't, Can't finish, finish that one. Crawford with the rebound. Put back no good. Rodriguez top of the key. Can't knock down the three. Tough rebound from Miller. Quickly up to Caba. Caba all the way to the rim. And they're going to call Rodriguez for the foul. Yeah, good keep by Rodriguez. Got some of the ball, but the watch there. They got the arm too. Two free throws for a couple. And Sanakaba currently one for three from the free throw line. He's able to rattle home the first. It's in the baseline. Take a little bit. Got the ball, but got a little bit on the floor. Cobb no good on the second. Boss wet with the rebound. And that goes out of bounds as Rodriguez couldn't handle the high that, pass from that's Crawford. That's what I'm saying. See, that's the, that's the pass that's always open. The deep corner, cross court. You know, it's a dangerous pass. Coaches don't really like it that often. But if you get it there, you're giving your teammate a wide open shot. Caba off the press breaker, couldn't squeeze that one home. Miller wrestles it away from Bosquet. McClanahan over to Brooks for three. Brooks can't get it to go. Long drive for Bosquet. Oh, up and under again. We always talk about long arms, Pat. There's so much of an advantage, especially when you're really athletic. Brooks for three. Can't get that one to go. Bosquet with another rebound for Cristo Red. Bosquet gets it poked away. It's going to stay with the Knights. Hey, showing a little bit of his dribbling skills. Looks like he's gliding down the court. Quet lays it down inside. Garcia able to finish. That's an unselfish play by Pasquet. Uh, because he usually could have put up that five foot shot. Javi Ellis off the up fake. Gets the ball poked away. Calls timeout here for Snowden. With 15 seconds left in the shot clock. Sort of been Ellis so far in this game. He hasn't really been able to get his feet under him offensively. Well, I tell you, he's a, he's a sophomore, but I like the way he, every time down when his teammates have shots going up, he's he's finding some room underneath. He gets his hands, he gets his hands on a lot of loose balls, gives his team second and third chances on the offensive glass. And for a young player, I know I know Paul Rogers loves to give him minutes. <laughs> no question. Now, folks, our upcoming game that we know about is going to be. Friday, March 20th at 6.15 p.m. It's a Boston City League All-Star Classic over at the Cabot Center at Northeastern University. That's going to be live on Boston City TV. You got Xfinity, it's Channel 24, RCN, Channel 13, and Verizon File, Channel 1962. We could be covering some state tournament games before that. A lot of activity in March. Madness ensues. Three-point lead here for Cristo Ray with 5.55 left to go in the third quarter. Rodriguez coming up with the steal for the Knights. Good swing to Crawford for three. And it's going to be another foul on Snowden. Oh, Papa. With Crawford taking the three. Foul the three-point show shooter again. Is that the first half? 
West Cobb is trying to close out. Yeah, a little under, out of control. He's going to jump in the air. I mean, it's hard because you, you want to get there in time to bother the shot, but at the same time, you have to be under control so that you don't run into the shooter. Crawford, no good on the first free throw. Hit the second, we'll get one more. Crawford currently two for five from the free throw line. A combination player for uh, Larry Merritt plays guard and forward. Taba going baseline, gets it knocked away from behind. Miller trying to steal it for Snowden. Bosquet couldn't squeeze that one in. Ellis comes away with the rebound for the Cougars. Quickly up to Kaba. To Brooks. Couldn't get that to go. Followed up by Javier Ellis, the Ellis. senior. Big guy runs the floor, gets an easy layup. Bosquet. Might be a play control foul, looks like. I'm going to call a block. Okay, so there's going to be a chance for a three-point yeah, play. Miller. Originally, I thought it was offensive as well. Yeah. Substitution for Cristo Ray coming Cristo back in is Lara Quinte. All right, so the basket counts. And chance for a three-point play. Say, basket just, he just, just glides to the basket pass. He does. It's, he's really deceiving when you try to defend him for a block shot. 21 points now for Ray Bosquet here with just over five minutes left to go in the third quarter. Kaba inside to Miller. Oh, nice Swipe away Crawford. by Crawford. Leads it up to Lara Quinte, and he's going to get two free throws. Really good steal is uh, Kaba was trying to go strong to the basket. There you see. Layup attempt. A little bit of a run here on both ends of the floor for Cristo Ray, giving him this five-point lead. Making sure the foul is correct. The team fouls are correct. A foul was on Gerard McClanahan. Hits the first substitution. Javier Ellis coming back in. This you know, where this gonna game is going, I was just going to say, where this game is going, we're going to keep Ellis off the floor too much. He's been running the floor. He's been running baseline to baseline. So he, he needed a break at some point. Arquente, one for two from the strike. Ellis. He's going to get two free throws. Fouls on Crawford from behind. Ellis now has six points and 11 rebounds. Cannot hit the first. Ellis, he's been active. He just had, he just had a nightmare of a first half trying to Finish some plays inside. Had some bad luck with a couple of them that rolled out. Richard Kaplan back in for Snowden. Okay. Ellis knocks down the second. Five point lead for Crystal Wright. Turnover that time. Here comes Kaba off the steal. And he's going to get two more from the strike. One of the few fast breaks for Snowden. Off good defense. If they're able to strip the dribbler. Uh, Quince, the foul prevented the layup. Both these teams struggling from the free throw line. 
Watch Lara Quenche. That, that just making sure that Cobble can't get in the air for that, that lay for chance. Cobble hits second. That's down to a four point lead with just under four and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter. Wet. Martinez Herrera no good in the three. Ellis with another rebound. Kaba. Kaplan for three. Can't get it to go. It's swiped away by Miller. The stay with Snowden. Miller again, and they're getting the rebound. Inside to Ellis, who scores the left hand. Took his time, that, that one. Didn't worry about the soft block on the side. Back to a two-point ball game. Crawford off the mark with that corner three. Brooks with the rebound, quickly up to Kaplan. That goes out of bounds, back to Cristo Ray. No, uh, he just pointed the wrong way. It's still Snowden's ball. Kaba all the way to the rim. We're tied at 44. Nice pass by Javier. 6 0 run there for Snowden to tie it up. Larry Quinte. Can't answer with the three. Marquise Miller with another rebound. Yeah, it's like, it seems like both teams keep having these six overruns. Go up six, then this team knows tied up. Kaba finishes yes. inside and Snowden regains the lead. Well, you talked about him at halftime. Like yeah, Larry Merritt wants a timeout. That's an eight overrun. You talked about Kaba and the offense wasn't doing a whole lot. He's creating. Because the, the, the pace defensively is allowing him some open floor. So watch, watch this nice finish here. He avoids the contact and is able to spin it home. Kaba now has 14 points to lead the Cougars, who have a two point lead over the Crystal Ray Knights here towards the end of the third quarter. And that was a much needed run that time from Snowden. Because here's another look at that finish by Kaba. Yep. Yeah, he knows that the Crystal Ray guard's going to try to. to Create an offensive foul. But instead, he's able to avoid it. Still spin it home. Spot in the sectional finals on the line here tonight as the Snowden Cougars lead Chris O'Reilly 46 44. And if you're Chris O'Reilly right now, you can't keep committing those turnovers and giving those that's, fast that's breaks up to exactly, Snowden. That's the problem. It seems like both teams are trading turnovers and fast break baskets. That's, well, both of these coaches consider that strength. Consider, they both consider the same thing, strengths. You know, double the ball, poke, poke at it, get steals, and run the floor. We're going to foul inside as Ellis tried to block Garcia. Again, see, I think if Ellis had just gone straight up, he, he might have still gotten the ball. But you watch here, he goes, there's a lot of, yes, swiping at the ball. <laughs> see, Javier didn't hit the whistle right away. It was. See, it no good on the first it is surprised that both teams are struggling from the foul line so much. See, it misses the second. Off the steal, Kaplan up to Brooks for the layup. And what a steal, steal that by time Cabo. by Cabo on job. the fast break. Read that one perfectly. Brooks inside to Miller, back to Kaba. 
Traveled, eh? He should have shot the ball. Now it's right in front of his pen. He, he can take that shot. He just wanted to create something else. Substitution for Cristo Ray. Back in for the Knights is Michael Nunez Perez. Sophomore. Yes, Perez comes right in and scores off the window. Nice bank shot under control. Marquise Miller. That basket by Nunez Perez broke a 10 0 golden run. You see Miller again, always in the action. Marquise will now get two free throws. <laughs> Cannot hit the first. He's now two for six from the free throw line. Larry Quente back in for Cristo Wright. for two from the stripe that time is Miller. Still a two-point lead for Snowden. And Amari Brooks whistle for the reach in. Hey, the bad free throw shooting by both teams is also keeping a close game. Rodriguez for three, can't get it to go. Offensive rebound and put back for Lara Quente. Right off the bench, able to get a hoop to tie the score. 48 apiece with a minute and a half left to go in the third quarter. Going oh. away by Bosquet. Heck of a defensive play by Kaplan. It's a travel there. It's called foul first, foul on Crawford. Both teams trying to defend the hoop as Snowden has six block shots. Ellis trying to go baseline, can't squeeze it home. Miller for the putback. The uh, sophomore is doing some work underneath. He really is. Against Snowden. The lead once again here with a minute left to go in the third quarter. Nunez Perez. Ellis with the rebound for Snowden. Inside to Miller. Gets blocked inside by Lara Quinte. Nunez gets pinned by Ellis. Brooks back down the other end. Turns it over. Rodriguez back to Crawford inside. Caba all the way to the basket. He walked inside by Larry Quinte. What a hustle play by Miller. Hustle plays all around the court, Pat. Kaplan fouled at the top of the key. That'll keep it with Snowden here with 11 seconds left to go before the end of the quarter. Watch this block. Clean, beautiful, clean block. Perfect timing by Lara Quinta. line got fouled and he's gonna get two from the strike they have five seconds left in the quarter and defense again Stoden currently eight for 17 from the free throw line and Kaplan's able to hit the first Substitution for Christo Ray coming back in for these final five seconds of the quarter is Garcia. 
Chaplin two for two from the charity stripe. Four point lead here from Snowden. Rodriguez fires from half court. Still had some time. And after three here from Madison Park High School, it's the Snowden Cougars with a four point lead over the Cristo Ray Knights here in the boys North Division Four sectional semifinals. When we come back, we'll have the fourth quarter here on Game of the Week, sectional finals trip on the line here in Roxbury. High School in Roxbury as Snowden leads Crystal Ray 52-48. Our sideline reporter Seth Orensky has an update for us. Seth, what do you have? Thanks, guys. Despite the frenetic nature of this game and the back-and-forth play, Larry Merritt has just been very calm throughout. He's just focused during every single timeout on defensive positioning and how they're going to break the press the other way. He's confident if they can just execute here in the fourth quarter that they can win this game. Guys? Seth, thanks very much. So, Christo Ray still comfortable with this four-point deficit. I think it's because the, the, he's probably thinking that, well, he hasn't got a whole lot out of Bas Basquet in that third quarter. That's right. And his junior is not, he doesn't have to worry about fouls now. Still just has the two fouls. He can go strong to the basket. I think that's, that's in terms of offense, I think that's what he's probably banking on. The defensive effort has been there the entire game. For Christo Ray will start out the fourth quarter. Trailing by four. Jumper no good that time. Rebound comes down to Snowden. Block inside again by Lara Quinton. Beautiful lay down of Bosquet on the fast break. Runner no good that time. Put back is good by Ismail. Rodriguez inside the Bosquet. Mayu Crawford, long two, gets it to go for Cristo Ray. Be a reaching, the yes, a reaching foul. Looks like that's going to be free throws. Yeah, already 17 fouls on Cristo Ray. Yeah, it's going to be one on one. Three subs in for Snowden as Ellis, Miller, and Kava come back in for the Cougars. And it's McClanahan now at the free throw line shooting one and one for Snowden. It's actually 18 fouls on Crystal Ray. Knocks down the first. He's now two for two at the free throw line. It's both. Extends the snow lead back to four. Corner three. Buried that time for Rodriguez. Trying to drive inside. He gets fouled on his way to the basket. The 
You'll see a big fella using that body of his trying to get to the basket. Ellis shooting two. points and 13 rebounds now for Javier Ellis. Coming back in for Crystal Ray. Mathurin. As Crawford heads to the bench. Baba with the offensive rebound. Put back no good. Bosquet pulls it down for Crystal Ray. Bosquet going coast to the coast. And he gets fouled on his way to the basket. Watch the big fellows. He's able to hit. He actually, he made one of those earlier, but that time a little bit too much body contact. Sweat knocks down the first. Nice compact stroke from the free throw line. Larry Merritt, just like Seth said, always can concentrate in the defensive position. Sweat hits both. Tied up at 57 here with two minutes gone by in the fourth quarter. Kaplan can't hit the pull up jumper. Miller going after the loose ball. Miller is able to call the timeout and save the possession here with 5.51 left to go in the fourth quarter. So Marquise Miller again getting on the offensive glass. I was just going to say the same class. thing. He's had a game. He's really had a game. <clears throat> yeah. Miller now with 13 rebounds for Snowden. So just about, just under six minutes left to go. We're still tied up here at 57. Either team wants to give in. The sectional finals trip on the line. Up to Tewksbury. <clears throat> well, it's one of those things, like, like you said earlier, but it's, it's, it's been a, a matter of four to six-point runs for each team, back that's and right. forth. So who's going to have the last run? I mean, that's that, it just seems like one of those crazy kind of games. The only thing right now for Snowden is they haven't been able to hit much from the outside. It's been Crystal Ray who, if they were down, they'd be they'd getting a big back. three right. here, here and there, whereas Snowden has not been able to hit much from the perimeter. Ari Brooks hit one or two in the first half. That's really been it. Well, that's, the, that's why it's so important that the big fellas, uh, <clears throat> Miller, Cabra, uh, uh, and, and <clears throat> the sophomore here are working so hard underneath. Cabra trying to go baseline. Can't hit that shot. Gets his own rebound. The travel here. Oh, we're going I call, call a bump, bump first. Well, this could be double bonus. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be two free throws for Kaba. So Snowden will be shooting two the rest of the way. Continues their struggles at the free throw line. Substitution for Crystal Ray as Mathurin comes back in for the Knights. Garcia heads to the bench. Kaba knocks down the second. One point lead here for Snowden. Quinte getting tied up near half court. That's going to be a travel on Lara Quinte. Perfect double team. Kaba off the pick. 
All the way to the basket, couldn't get it to go. Miller, put back no good. Kaba chases after the loose ball. Inside to Ellis, who gets fouled. So Javi Ellis will get two more from the free throw line. This is where the size, the size for Snowden is really controlling the backboard. Ellis cannot hit the first. Akineli Crawford coming back in for Christo Ray. Second. So, Two-point game, two-point lead for Snowden. Right, Quinte off the up fake. Can't get that one to go. I don't know how that rolled out. Yeah. <laughs> like it was, I thought it was halfway down exactly. the net. Yeah. That was a strange one. Kaplan tries to feed Ellis inside. Ellis gets that one to go. Nice little jump hook by Ellis. Four point lead for Snowden. Rodriguez, corner three. Hooks with the rebound for the Cougars. The travel there, good job by Lara Puente. He saw that Cabo wanted to just get it and take off. Stepped in front, created the extra step. Three ball from Lara Quinte off the back iron. Cabo skies for the rebound. It's be held ball. That's going to stay with Snowden. Kaplan on the drive, Brooks now going baseline, can't hit the runner, but he's fouled. Stepped out of bounds. No, he did step out of bounds, you're right. Well, Coach Rogers was right when he said this game was going to be a long game. I mean, with all these fouls, all these different turnovers. All the, all the trips to the foul line, you're right. It's going to be a long four minutes. Travel there. Yeah. He traveled. Might have wow. been better off just letting just let it go. Backcourt yeah. violation. I think he. Th I, I, I think in his mind he was going to try to get a pass to his teammate. That's right. Because it wasn't two on one. Crystal Ray calls a timeout with 3:47 left to go here in yeah. the fourth yeah, quarter. Yeah, Merritt's had. They've had like four empty possessions in a row. I haven't seen it was tied, wet. It, it was tied at 57 and. Last couple of minutes, all we've had is the free throws and that, that little jump hook. Hey, you haven't seen a lot of Ray Bosquet over the last couple of I mean, minutes. Yeah, that's probably what they're going to talk about. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> we got a guy we, we gotta, who likes to score here. Yeah, he's. He, he, wow. Well, sometimes when, again, that I'm just surprised that Crystal Ray keeps getting caught with that double team at half court. Uh, and. They got a couple turnovers out of it. There was a traveling violation. So it's one of those situations where, you know, spacing has to be important. And also, your teammates have to help out by coming to the ball. You know, the last time Larry Quinte got, got trapped like that and got called for travel, he was trying to step through the double team and make a pass, but ended up being an extra step. So everybody, you got, everybody's got to be in sync. You, you know that the, the trap's coming. You know what you did it. He's done it the entire night. That's so right. You, you definitely know it's coming. Yeah. What? 
we'll, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see basketball, like, like you just said, go back, go back to basketball square. Bosquette currently with 25 points and 10 rebounds. It's been sort of quiet here in the fourth quarter. Good swing from Crystal Ray. Crawford for three. Can't get it to go. Kaplan gets fouled right around half court. So Kaplan's going to get two free throws. Even though it seemed like the last, what, three or four minutes, they still just sort of taking control, there's still three and a half minutes to go in the game. That's right. Plenty of time. That one short on the first, couldn't even get the rim that time. He was two for two in his last trip. This time of the game, he start aiming instead of shooting. Can't hit the second. Ellis there, I guess a put back. <laughs> Makes up for the two missed free throws. It's back to a six-point lead for Snowden. There's double team. Rodriguez, corner three, can't hit it. Put back from Bosquet, no good. Third time is a charm. He can't get it to go, but he will get two free throws. See Bosque fighting in there trying to, <clears throat> trying to keep his team alive. Third personal foul for Javi Ellis. Bosque hits the first. Now we're going to see Crystal Ray set up their trap after <clears throat> now make or miss it. It basically makes it. Missed free throw, what a rebound. Oh, Miller had the rebound, but then Crawford. lost it. Now it's Kaplan going after the loose ball with Rodriguez, okay, and that's going to stay with Crystal Ray. Crystal Ray. They hustle by Crawford in there and Rodriguez. Bosquet. And he's going to get more free more. throws. Yeah. Nice, he cut between two plays, cut between Miller and, uh, <clears throat> and Calva. I don't know how you lose that guy. I was gonna say, yeah. Pass. That foul was on Calva, his third personal foul. While squinting, this is another. <clears throat> Missed three, three throws, always kill a comeback. Squet now five for eight from the stripe. Knocks out a second. Larry Quente going to head to the bench as Nunez Perez back in for Cristo Ray. Nunez Perez is the double team guy. As soon as the ball goes, goes in bounds, he'll, he'll double team. There he goes. Lava inside to Kaplan for the layup. Six point lead for Snowden. Almost a turnover there. They get it inside to Bosquet. Oh. And the foul. I don't know how he got that one off that. He was in the air, he got hit, then was able to shoot the ball. <laughs> that was some play by the, by the junior. Watch this, he goes up in the air, gets hit right there, then he shoots the ball. <laughs> fouls on Miller, that's four on him. That's four personal fouls for Marquise Miller. <laughs> no, violations on Snowden. Yeah, Snowden Basket committed count. the foul. Yeah. So the free throw is good, and now Crystal Ray is going to go to the free throw line again. Miller fouled out. That's five on him. So the free throw is good, and there was a foul at the end of the free throw. But the last time they did, they announced four fouls on Miller.
Yeah, it's, if, if there's a foul on Miller, he should have five. Yeah, that's just the for Marquise. It's Wash 13 underneath. The yeah, it shouldn't be there. Right. Foul would be on the other side. That would be on Ellis. Yeah. Oh. oh, it's got a... Oh. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's got to be bonus, yeah. It's got to be bonus because that's nine team fouls on Snowden, so Crystal Ray should be shooting one on one. They called a foul after the made basket by, made free throw by Bosquet. So now Crystal Ray, whoever was fouled, which it looked like it was Crawford, should be shooting a one on one. Let's watch it again. Left side of the screen. Yeah, oh, yeah, he gets fouled on Ellis. Yep, so <laughs> Ellis popped him down. <laughs> And Javier comes up saying, I didn't, I didn't foul him. A little bit of a push. So, Crystal Ray. So that's 10, that's actually 10 team fouls on. Crystal Ray possession. I guess that's the rule. All right, I, you, got, you got me on that one. Big chance here for Crystal Ray, though. Two-point lead for Snowden right now. Larry Quinte with a putback in one. I'll tell you, Larry Quinte has made a couple of plays off the ball. Pat. He had the two big block shots earlier in the quarter. He's been trying to handle the ball for them. And now Ellis has fouled out. Let's watch Larry Quincy. Oh, yeah, Ellis going to burn the arm. Yeah. 16 points and 16 boards for Javi Ellis. Larry Quincy gives Crystal Ray a one point lead. Timeout here with 103 
three left to go in the fourth quarter. We're tied up at 70 apiece. You can see the bench really going to Jeremiah, the sophomore who made the big three-point play. Our sideline reporter Seth Orensky has got an update. Seth, what's happening? Thanks, guys. For the first time with this team down by six points, Larry Merritt took it to his team and said they weren't playing good enough to win this game and told Ray Bosquet, you need to lead us right now. What has he done? Seven of the team's 11 points to get them back into a 70-70 tie. He's going aggressive to the hoop, and he's showing why Ray Bosquet's ceiling is so high, but also why his coach said his floor is 25 points. His ceiling's 35 to 40. Right now, Bosquet has got them back into the game after struggling throughout most of that third quarter. Guys, take it away. Seth, thanks very much. In these tight games, you often see your best players shine through, and that's what we're seeing right now with Boss Oh, Sweat. no doubt about that. I mean, that last little flip shot that he made off balance. That was amazing. So we're tied up at 70 here with a minute three left to go in the fourth quarter. Crystal Ray with the basketball. Trip to the sectional final of the death stake. Bosquet to the corner. Wofford trying to score inside. It's swatted out of bounds by his move. Uh, Crystal Race to call the right play with, with the big fella fouled out. He's going to attack the basket. And both teams in double bonus, too. Deflected inside. It's his move. Brooks, quarter three, off the back rim. Bosquet comes away with it. Bosquet to the basket. They just called an offensive foul on Ray Bosquet. He has an offensive foul. He called an offensive foul. Yep, offensive foul on Bosquet. The basket is no good. Offensive foul on Ray Bosquet. His third. Jordan having trouble getting the ball inbounds. They're going to have to call a timeout. What a call at this point in the game as Bosquet thought he had a basket in the foul, but it's called an offensive foul on the Chris O'Ray Jr. And now Snowden with the ball here with just under 40 seconds left to go. Well, still a 30 second shot clock, so tie game is. Well, the key, the key is this double bonus for both teams. That's, that's, that's probably the most important stat right now. There's, there's definitely going to be some contact. Right now, if you're Snowden, you got to make sure you get the ball in cleanly. And then you got to get it up half court. Crystal Ray's full court pressure has been very good tonight. We'll see what the Cougars can come up with off the inbound pass. Javier Ellis has already fouled out for Snowden. And Herbeck and Martinez, Martinez Herrera, Herrera for Crystal Ray. For Crystal Ray. Two, both key players. Marquise Miller currently with four fouls for Snowden. They get it into Ismaeus off the inbounds pass. Now it's Kaplan with it for Snowden. Side to Ismaeus, scores for Snoke. Puts them up by two. Boy, Ismaeus has had a heck of a minute here for the Snoke Cougar. He's got seven of his ten points in the fourth quarter. None bigger than that shot right there. Sophomore. The big play, good catch, goes straight up, does what he's supposed to do. So we talk to Paul Rogers right now. Say, hey, what if we tell you that your, your, your sophomore forward is, is <laughs> makes the biggest plays for you in the last <laughs> two minutes? <laughs> Just amazing. 
We'll see what Crystal Ray can come up with out of the timeout. They trail by two. You gotta think they're gonna go through Bosquet offensively. Last couple times down, he's dribbled it up and then dished it off. Well, to one right. of the, well the thing about it is, you know, if, if he keeps the ball in the middle of the floor, his teammates who, who, who shoot from the deep corners, they'll, they'll both be open. So it's up to him to have the judgment of either finishing himself or kicking it out to one of his open teammates for a jump shot. So Snow's going to go full court pressure now. It's interesting. I'm sorry, three quarter court pressure. Larry Quinte now with it for Crystal Ray. Gets deflected. This Mayus up to Brooks. Stone's just got to hang foul, on to it. Crystal foul. Ray has got a foul. And Kaplan is fouled right along the baseline. And Stone with a two point lead. Deflected pass. <laughs> Kaplan who got his hand on it. This may have it was Kaplan. pushed it up. Kaplan cannot hit the first. Okay, well, make a miss is still a one possession game. Kaplan makes it a three point ball game. 13 seconds left to go. Crystal Ray, gonna have to shoot a three to tie it up. They get it over to Lara Quinte. Bosquet, all the way to the basket, can't oh. get it to go. And Kaba steps out, out of bounds. bounds, so that's gonna go back to Crystal Ray. 0.4 seconds left on the clock. Crawford gets it into Rodriguez, and the Snowden Cougars hang on to win in a thriller here at Madison Park High School. They defeat the Crystal Ray Knights 73 to 70 here in the boys' North Division IV sectional semifinals. Well, that was stressful for everybody involved. Well, I'll tell you, it's funny because I think both coaches we're prepared for it to go down to the wire. That's right. Uh, and it's a matter of, we all talk about rebounds and free throws, that both teams still struggle at the free throw line at the end, but up and down play, you have the big players for each team made shots, and you've got to talk about the sophomore, <laughs> Jeremiah, the sophomore over there for Snowden, made, what, five points in the last minute of the play. That's right. Uh, basically to be the hero of the game. Sure. Because the, the, the big guy, Miller, fouled out. Okay, so usually when you, you when you you lose your best big man or your biggest big man, <laughs> you, you don't know what you're going to do. You're usually making all kinds of adjustments. But Paul Rogers had confidence. He stayed with his regular defense, his regular lineup, and just plunked the sophomore in. That's right. And he came up with the biggest plays. So, fantastic way to end the game there for Snowden as they are able to hang on and defeat Cristo Ray, 73-70. to 70. Folks, we're going to head to break. When we come back, we'll have our Game of the Week MVP and our game-winning coach along with our final stats here from Madison Park High right after these messages. Don't go away. When I never graduated from high school, I realized I wanted to go back to school because I didn't want to work these back-breaking jobs the rest of my life. With the help of my father and having my son, that was all the motivation that I needed to come back to school. I felt accomplished. It made me feel that I could take on whatever challenges life throws at you. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Honey, what I think you need is a socket wrench. I play JV basketball. I'm sorry, I don't think it looks right. This is good and it's all is good, it, baby. Is it really all good? If you love me enough to routinely test your handyman skills, not to mention the strength of your marriage, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. I'm going to call my dad. 
One in three adults has pre-diabetes. That means it could be you, your favorite brother, your other brother, yes. you, your football buddy, your football buddy, you, your plumber, breathe right into your foot, your plumber's masseuse, yes. you, your dog walker, your cat jogger. With early diagnosis, pre-diabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. When I was 10, my mom got deported. We had a difficult time, and I feel that's why I didn't get to finish school. My husband is really supportive in a way that he pushed me to go back to school. She wants to have a career so her kids can look up to her. They both keep me motivated to go to school, and they see that if I do it, like they can do it too, you know? I feel that everything's possible. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Each year, there are more than a dozen significant tropical and winter storms that threaten the East Coast. So chances are there will be more hurricanes and blizzards near here again. And between school, sports, and social lives, chances are you won't be with your kids when it happens. Will they know what to do? Ready.gov slash kids has all the educational tools and information to make the conversation easy. When the time comes, chances are they'll feel prepared, not scared. So talk with your family today. All right, Monroe, you ready? Monroe! Here we go, the butterfly. Ready? I am what hunger looks like in America. I am an eight-year-old girl who's not excited for the last day of school. Because this may be the last time I'll have lunch. Till September. I am a single father of two who works three part-time jobs. And that's still not enough to put food on the table. I was created by artificial intelligence from faces of the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. Feeding America, 200 food banks strong. Imagine being fired because of who you love. Imagine being denied medical treatment because of who you marry. Imagine being evicted because of who you are. Millions of Americans don't have to imagine this. They have to live it. Because in 30 states, it's legal to discriminate against LGBT people. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzz warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to Madison Park High School in Roxbury. At the conclusion of Game of the Week, the Snowden Cougars are able to hang on for a three-point win over the Cristo Ray Knights. And really that last minute, it was the sophomore, Jeremiah Ismehus, who really came through for the Snowden Cougars. Now he's got to be surprised as anybody, anybody in the gym, <laughs> right? But you give him credit. He, he did what he had to do, made a huge three-point play to tie the game because his team was down three. That's right. When he got fouled on the on his shot, made the free throw to tie the game, then came back with, with the tie game to put right. his team ahead. So uh, unexpected, but state tournament, you never know who has to come up big, especially when one of your starters fouls out. That's right. It was Ismay Hughes with the clutch play there for Snowden. He and the head coach, uh, Paul Rogers, are with our sideline reporter, Seth Orensky. Seth, take it away. 
joined by our MVP, Jeremiah Ismias and Paul Rogers. Jeremiah, 10 points, nine rebounds, three blocks, but every single important play down the stretch, you score the game-winning basket, you come up with the steal in the next possession, and then the contest on Bosquet where you don't draw the foul, don't give him the three-point play. You came in because Javi Ellis fouled out. What were you trying to do uh, with your team down by a single point in the state playoffs? I was trying to fill in the gaps for my teammates. They believed in me, my coaches believed in me, and I had heart and I played to my fullest potential. Uh, what does it feel like to score the game-winning basket in a state playoff game as a sophomore with a huge crowd in front of you? Um, it feels good. Like, to be honest, it just feels good to, to win that game, move on to states, and to, to be with my teammates. That's it. You guys, you play behind Javi Ellis, who's obviously a phenomenal player, but you were huge in this game, uh, rebounding extremely well. What's kind of the focus as a younger player on the varsity team? What has coach kind of told you? What have some of the older guys told you about your role and what you need to do for this team? Um, my teammates always told me to focus. Coach does the same thing. He says I should put in all my hard work into what I'm doing so that I can probably get a scholarship in the future. That's, that's, that's it. Well, the focus paid off today. Congratulations, Jeremiah. We'll bring in coach. Uh, coach, this was a wild one. Uh, you guys went up by six. It looked like maybe you would pull away. Then they came back, that crazy possession, yep. multiple fouls. They yep. end up going up by a point. Mm -hmm. How did you try to settle your team down? What was kind of the, the, the key message to your team when you went down by a point? I told them that um, I believe we're going to win this game. I said, we've been doing this all year. We played tough games, tough opponents all season long. We haven't lost a D4 game yet, and we don't expect to lose one. So that's it. Jeremiah Ismias, great story. A sophomore who every single big play down the stretch today was his day. Yep. What does that say about your team? Because it was Ismias, Kapilin did a great job in the second half handling the ball. It wasn't your starters who necessarily had to carry the load. Mm -hmm. What does that say about your team's depth? Um, you know, I've been saying it all year. You can ask any of my friends. I love my guys. They, they play so hard and they play for each other. So, like, that's an, ex that's an expectation for us. Next man up. That's it. This is your first trip to the sectional finals in eight years. Yeah, I, yep. What does that mean for this program? You know what? Bookend, like that was my first year as a coach at Snowden. Uh, we got there, makeshift lineup. We had like six guys that could kind of play in an eighth grader. And uh, we were flying by the seat of our pants. Now our program is more established, but like we're going we're gonna to enjoy this tonight. We're going to get ready for awesome prep on Friday. We saw Fenway win. Yep. They'll be playing ahead of you guys on Friday. Yep. What does it mean to have two city schools go there, a little bit of city camaraderie on the road? You know what? Boo is like a mentor to me. He's a phenomenal coach. I mean, 20 city championships, three state championships. So, like, we're excited. We're excited to be there with them. Like, we're going to go through this experience as Boston residents together. Congratulations on the victory. It was a very exciting one. Guys, take it away. Thanks very much, Seth. Uh, certainly looking forward to the sectional finals with two City League teams in the D4 sectional finals up in the north uh, this time around this season. And uh, Coach Rogers got to be happy for, for him and his team as they are heading back to the sectional finals first time in eight years. So it's oh, been yeah. a little well, while. Like you said, it's been this, uh, uh, that was his first year he got right. there, and now he's going back, and it's taken a while. But uh, it's just it's just strange how things happen. Uh, have a sophomore make the big play, and let's not forget, the big three point play that he made came off an air ball three point shot That's from right. one of his teammates. That's right. So and you talk about having uh, bad luck for Crystal Ray, good luck for Snowden. That's how it turns out. Just like this, like the play that Basquet made. He thought he, he, thought he had a an and one. We made the shot. It's called for offensive foul. That's so right. it's you know. Plays like that, obviously, you know, are, are huge in that they end up turning the game around and Snowden moves on and goes up to, to Tewksbury. That's right. <laughs> Razor-thin contest between both these teams. Let's take a look at the final stats here from Madison Park High before we sign off. Yeah, Crystal Ray, basketball. We talked about him uh, having to come through in the fourth quarter. He did He did his best. Uh, ended up 32 points. Rodriguez had another 14. Rebounds, Basquette had 13 rebounds. Uh, <clears throat> Laraquense with six rebounds and an assist. Crawford had five off the bench, and Larry Quincy also with five assists. Let's take a look at the Snowden final stats. Snowden, Ellis, 16 big points. Cowboy, 15 points. The rebounds were interesting. Miller, the sophomore, 16 rebounds. And, of course, Ellis, the big guy, D, did foul out, but got 16 rebounds. So went 16 and 16 before he fouled out. For the assists, uh, Capelon had six, and then McClanahan had five. So Snowden, uh, pretty much just like Coach said, 
Uh, they've been in games like this all year, so they're used to having uh, tight finishes. This is just another one added to that list, and now, uh, like you said, survive and move on. That's right. We certainly survive and move on here with our production as well. As uh, This is certainly a lot of fun here tonight. If you want to watch this game again, you can go to our website, www.cityofboston.gov slash game of the week. All the games from this season will be up on that site. You can also follow us on our social media pages. You can go to our Facebook page, go to facebook.com slash game of the week Boston. A lot of good links and different updates about what we're doing up on that site. You can also follow us on Twitter, at Boston City TV. And if you want to tweet at us, Use the hashtag BostonGOW. We should be heading up to Tukes Ferry on Friday night. We'll make sure to confirm that and put it out on our social media sites, which games we're going to be covering. But for right now, we're going to say so long here from Madison Park High in Roxbury. We'll see you next time on Game of the Week. Take care, everybody. <laughs>